So welcome to video problem 17, where we determine the magnetic flux density for an infinitely long solenoid. We will then determine its inductance by both the magnetic flux approach and the magnetic energy approach. So here we have a configuration of uh, the infinite solenoid. We have a non-magnetic core with uh, free space permeability, mu naught, and the core itself has a cylindrical cross-section with radius A. Uh, a cross-sectional view of the configuration is shown on the figure to the right. The non-magnetic core is uh, wound with n turns of wire, which we can see uh, here and here, and we have n turns of wire per unit length, and each of the turns will carry a current I0. Uh, we introduce uh, these two coordinate systems, uh, the usual rectangular and associated uh, circular cylindrical coordinate system, as shown on the figures here. We now postulate uh, that the B field will only exist inside uh, of our infinite solenoid. It will have Z component and this Z component will have a constant value uh, in the non-magnetic core. And we would now like to present a brief argument for why uh, this uh, must be uh, the case. Consider uh, a cross section of our configuration for some angle phi. Uh, this is shown on the figure below. And in this cross section, we can view the fields uh, coming from our infinite solenoid as being a superposition of uh, fields uh, which are due to infinite surface current sheets. If we consider uh, the configuration here as uh, the upper current sheet, we know from video problem 12 that below uh, that current sheet the field will point in Z direction while above it will point in the opposite direction and the magnitude of these fields will be constant. Now we can consider uh, the below uh, current sheet where the surface current is flowing in the opposite direction. Uh, this will produce a field which will be in the Z direction in the upper half plane and minus Z direction in the lower half plane here. It is very obvious and clear from this figure that the fields between the sheets will uh, superimpose to each other while the fields outside uh, of these current sheets, which is the region here and also the region here, will cancel one another. And this is of course a, uh, an observation uh, and conclusion we can make for any angle phi, which is why we conclude that the B field will only exist inside of the non-magnetic core and it will have a Z component which will be constant. Now that we have argued for this, the objective is next to determine uh, our B field in the infinite solenoid. And to this end, we can apply Ampere's law, which is given by the equation uh, shown here, and we will apply it to this rectangular uh, Amperian contour, which is residing partly in our uh, solenoid and partly outside. Uh, to the left, we have the circulation of the B field along this closed path C, and to the right, we have free space permeability times the total current flowing through the surface S, which is being bounded by this integration path C. Obviously, the total current is the current in the single turn multiplied with the number of turns per unit length, multiplied, of course, with the total length of the integration path. This is the right-hand side uh, that we have uh, dealt with and uh, looking at the left-hand side, uh, which is the circulation integral of the B field along this rectangular path, we of course see that the only contribution uh, to this integral will come from the path which is residing uh, in our uh, infinite solenoid as shown here. These parts uh, that are orthogonal to the B field uh, will contribute zero because DL on these parts is orthogonal to our B field. And of course, there will be no contribution to this integral from this path since the B field outside is equal to zero. The L element uh, on this portion of our integration contour is obviously in the Z direction and the magnitude is the Z 
and when we plug uh, things in our ampere slow, we integrate from some uh, constant value z0 to z0 plus l. This is our B field and this is our DL element and this should be equal uh, to mu0 times the total current which is given by the expression here. This integration is straightforward because uh, Bz component is uh, constant so we can simply take it outside and the integral amounts to multiplying our Bz component with the length L of our integral integration path C. So the final result for the B field will look as shown uh, on the equation uh, uh, here. So it will point in Z direction, it will be proportional to the free space permeability, the current in the single turn and the number of turns per unit length. So now that we know the B field in the non-magnetic core, we would like to use it to find the inductance uh, and this will uh, first be done by using the magnetic flux approach. The B field, which is illustrated here, will give rise to a magnetic flux which is being linked by the current in our wire. And uh, the flux is uh, given uh, by the result here. This is essentially a surface integral of our B field. And uh, the solenoid is infinite in Z direction, so uh, we will essentially speak about flux per unit length, which is indicated by our prime uh, superscript over here. The B field will uh, cross uh, the entire cross section of our non magnetic core, which is the surface here, or in this cross section, uh, the surface over here. The S element on this surface uh, is given by the expression here. The B field is constant over the cross sectional area of our non magnetic core, so the flux will essentially amount to multiplying uh, the B field with the cross sectional area. So the surface integral that is indicated here is very simple uh, to perform in this particular case. The core is cylindrical, so its cross section is, uh, of course, given by the expression here, giving us the following result for the magnetic flux per unit length. When we know the flux, we can calculate the flux linkage by simply multiplying magnetic flux with the number of turns per unit length, giving us the expression here. And then, of course, the inductance per unit length is equal to the flux linkage per unit length uh, divided with the current in the single turn uh, of our uh, wire uh, in our infinite solenoid configuration. So to the right, you see the final result. And what you note from this one in particular is that the inductance is proportional to the square of the number of turns. And this is a property which is general for any wire wound inductor. Having determined the inductance by the flux approach, uh, we would like to illustrate now uh, an alternative approach which is based on the magnetic energy. And uh, the general definition of magnetic energy is given uh, by the expression here, which is essentially a volume integral of this scalar product between the B field and the H field, where the H field is the magnetic field intensity in our uh, non-magnetic core. The fields uh, are shown to the right. This is the previously derived B field and our non-magnetic core is a simple magnetic material, which means that the H field is given by the expression here. Uh, finally, giving us the result for the dot product between the two as shown over here. The volume integral in uh, cylindrical coordinates uh, is in general an integral in Z from minus infinity to plus infinity, uh, in phi from zero to two pi, and in R from zero to A. And what you see here is a typical dV uh, element or typical volume element in cylindrical coordinate system. Our solenoid is infinite uh, in Z direction, so we will actually not integrate along Z and we will then speak about energy per unit length or energy stored in the cross section of our infinite solenoid. 
and this is then uh, indicated uh, by the symbol shown here which is given uh, by the expression to the right and what you see here is of course the dot product of our b and h fields and we are integrating over the cross section of our non-magnetic core the integral in phi is simply giving a multiplication with 2 pi and uh, we are then left with the integral in r which is quite straightforward to perform with the result indicated here when you insert the integration limits you finally arrive at this expression for the magnetic energy stored per unit length in our configuration of infinite solenoid and this energy is uh, then of course linked to the inductance per unit length by this general uh, result from which we can very easily isolate the inductance per unit length which is given uh, by the very same result as on the previous slide. So we have now completed all of our tasks and you can see uh, the, the right results on this slide. Repeat uh, the names of all quantities shown above. Determine the corresponding expressions if the core is made of diamagnetic and paramagnetic material. Compare the B field in those cases to the non-magnetic core case considered presently and discuss the results. Finally, show that the inductance of a corresponding infinite solenoid of a rectangular cross-section with an area S uh, is given by the same expression as in the above circular cylindrical case. Thank you very much for your attention.